Alright everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Tundra Cast, and today we're going to be doing our mock expansion draft. So with me, I got Ryan. Hey boys, what's up? Got Nick. What's going on? And least of all, Rossi. <laughs> wow, okay, well, <laughs> Alright, so obviously the expansion draft, uh, I think we're going to get this out today as fast as possible. So you'll be seeing this on a Sunday, and we're going to be having the expansion draft stream on a Wednesday. And this morning, we've been completely panicking because the um, the trade protection or the protection lists, they just came out and they were completely different from what we expected. So we had to redo pretty much everything. Mostly Ryan had to redo pretty much everything. Yeah, a lot of the graphics are kind of last minute. So some of them <laughs> might not be the greatest, but, uh, you, you know, know, we move. Well, we move, we move, we move. It's all good. Yeah, so... I think we're gonna get started right away because Google Meets decided to change their policies. Um, first of all, we have Anna. Uh, damn it, it didn't work. That was so anticlimactic. There we go, Anaheim. So Sonny uh, Milano is going to the Anaheim. It's going from the Anaheim Ducks to the Seattle Kraken. So originally, I thought that they'd be they'd not be protecting Sam Steele in favor of protecting uh, their young defensive prospects like Caden Fleury and uh, who's the other guy? Caden Gooley? Uh, Caden Gooley, yeah. Yeah. So, but apparently not. They decided to leave uh, those guys um, unprotected in favor of old bums like and big, big contracts like Cam Fowler. Uh, so that left someone like Sonny Milano to be uh, taken by the Seattle Kraken. Um, Sonny Milano is a very, very serviceable, serviceable bottom six player. Um, obviously, the Seattle Kraken, they have um, a bunch of players at forward, as you're about to see. Uh, and their defense isn't exactly the strongest. But, you know, always at you can always focus on your strengths, trying to make them better. And the weaknesses, they can come later. Uh, so, Sonny Milano, um, I can't pull up my stats because I'm recording everything else right now, but, you know, uh, he was really serviceable for the Anaheim Ducks, and he could definitely do something special for the Seattle Kraken. What do you guys think? I mean, yeah, Milano's, what, 25 years old, um, and Anaheim's really done a lot of the younger players like Milano, Max Jones, Sam Steele, and Lindstrom like a disservice because I'm not sure they really know how to develop these mm -hmm. young guys. So I think just a change of um, a, a change in scenery and having the opportunity to play a more meaningful role on a team that I expect to be much more... Um, mm -hmm playoff ready more competitive than anaheim is right now i think we'll do good for him and um we'll see what i think we saw from him two three years ago when he when he broke out um as a, as a 23 year old yeah so like ryan said like he, they've done a lot of their younger players pretty bad uh they've done pretty bad by them because this guy was drafted by the columbus blue jackets 16th overall so it usually means they're going to be something special and for a good while, Milano looked like he was going to be something special, but then moved to Anaheim, and his uh, his production stag uh, stagnated a lot compared to back when he was in Columbus playing full time NHL minutes, right? But uh, with a change of scenery, getting a new chance on a new team, it could work out for him. He could be something special for them. Rossi, Nick. Um, no, I completely agree. Sonny Milano definitely has the ability still to, you know, turn it up and, and be what, you know, he was when he did have that breakout season. And I think Anaheim has kind of stagnated him. So I think it is a good pick, especially since he is still so young. And, you know, it's not like – and he's still got a pretty good cap hit. Yeah. And uh, like I did mention before, there are a, lot, a couple other players uh, available from Anaheim, uh, namely their defensemen. But, you know, I decided to go with Milano. That could be completely wrong. That's why it's a mock expansion draft. But, uh, uh, but yeah, there are different options. Uh, we decided to go with Milano. But if you were wanting to go with someone like Hayden Flurry, then you'd be completely based. Nick, you got anything else to say? No, I think Ryan pretty much made all the really good points that I was going to pretty much make. So it'll be a good scenery change for him for sure. All right. Next pick. 
Ah, Arizona. So this was one of my picks. Um, so originally, when I was planning for this video two days ago, I had Arizona taking Pitlick as well. But there was actually a side trade where uh, Seattle would give up their third round pick to Arizona for Oliver ekman Larson. Um, in addition to Tyler Pitlick, in order for Arizona to be able to protect Aiden Hill, so they went have, but then they trade Aiden Hill for a second. So now, if you look at the guys that are available for Arizona, there's like a lot of veterans like Brassard, a lot of expiring contracts on the blue line like Osterly. Um, just not really worth a pick, uh, in my opinion, for Arizona. Um, and Pitlick's a guy who can play in your bomb six. Um, is perfectly found as a depth forward if you have injuries. Um, he's, he's, he's a very versatile player. Uh, and I think Arizona, I think Arizona, you know, he doesn't really fit their timeline being 27, 28 years old and going to Seattle where maybe he gets ice time where he can at least compete for ice time and be part of that team's immediate future and immediate plans. Uh, I think is a, an ideal fit. I just didn't really see anybody else on that, on that team that was worth taking. Yep, uh, like Ryan mentioned, he could uh, definitely be play a pretty big part in Seattle's plans because he's been a pretty serviceable bottom six forward. Uh, you know, he's been getting in the range of 15 to 20 points um, in not full seasons. He's been injured a lot, right? So uh, he could definitely, uh, uh, definitely fit into uh, Seattle's plans, especially because when you look at the team at the end, you'll see it's uh, actually pretty uh, fairly decent, so they could potentially use Tyler Pitlick as someone as a playoff uh, in the playoffs because they could be making it their first year. Yeah. Um, so we can, we can move on to the next team. Uh, All right. Just to keep things moving. So this is one of Shay's picks. Um, and Shay was supposed to be the fifth member here today, but he, uh, he had some stuff to attend to. So the rest of us will just have to cover his picks for him. So, uh, I mean, if, if either Ross, you or Nick, you, you guys want to go over Kashe for Boston? Um, well, Andre Kashe is definitely a solid option. Um, he was, he's been pretty good ever since he came to Boston. And I think he's still very, He's still pretty young, and he's still got the ability to be, you know, a second and for, or first line forward. So it would be a definite, uh, a, a very solid pick for, for Seattle. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look at the players available, too, I mean, especially their forwards, I mean, we all knew Krejci was going to be left exposed. But you look at a guy like Taylor Hall as well, and again, his future's up in the air. We don't really know where he's going to play next year. I mean, like, he could stay in Boston. He could go to Seattle. I mean, he could go somewhere else after he gets picked by Seattle. So Andre Cash makes the most sense. He's got the most upside pretty much out of any forward and probably any other defenseman here. So, uh, And Cash is a good option as a, as a middle six guy. So. Yeah, uh, like like they mentioned, he's still got a lot of potential. He's only 25 years old. Um he was drafted really late by the Anaheim Ducks. He's an absolute steal in the seventh round. Uh, while he was in Anaheim, he did really, really good. He uh, was like yeah. half a point per game, over half a point per game. So Yeah, he scored 20 goals one year. So if he can hit yeah. that stride again for Seattle, that's a real good pick there. Wow. Yeah, so Boston, he didn't really get much of a chance there. But, you know, now that he's in Seattle, where uh, they are a new team, they're going to be looking for different players to step into different roles. Um, he could definitely, definitely play a big part for them. Yeah, just uh, just another change of scenery player who's been riddled with injuries since he got to Boston, never really settled into that lineup. Um, and so, you know, really great opportunity for him. Good talent. Uh, I think Seattle, Seattle's lucky to have a player like him. All right. Colin Miller. All right. This is one of my picks. So Buffalo Sabres. Uh, I initially thought that they would protect Miller and leave Rasmus Ristelainen uh, exposed because he's got the big cap at 5.4 million. He didn't really have a great year with Buffalo. And I thought that Tage Thompson would be exposed as well. And I thought Thompson was going to be the pick. I didn't think that Buffalo would protect him either. I kind of felt like they didn't value him that high. Um, I mean, he is a first round pick, so maybe you want to keep him for that reason. But a Colin Miller makes the most sense. Again, it's got the most upside and probably makes the most sense buy from a cap perspective and a value perspective. So he can fit right into that defense. He's a defensive player. Uh, not a bad pick for Seattle there. Yeah, I got to definitely agree with that. Colin Miller, Colin Miller is a really, really good player. Uh, like like Nick mentioned, oh God, like Nick mentioned, he is mostly a defensive guy, but he has a little uh, uh, offensive potential, especially when he was at Vegas. Mm -hmm. He was putting up pretty decent amount of points. He was like almost, 
half a point per game uh, in those two seasons. So he's definitely something that uh, uh, that a Seattle Kraken defense core could uh, could benefit from on the defensive and offensive side. Yeah, for sure. Especially if you if you, if something that you'll notice if you are looking to do your own mock expansion draft, um, is that there's not a lot of right handed defensemen available anymore. Especially after Dumba got protected, I think Graves played on the right side at times to so Colorado. He's in New Jersey now. He's going to be protected. Um, Justin Hall has been protected by Toronto. There's not a lot of right handed defensemen that maybe you would have thought was available at the start of this process. Um, the, a lot of them have now been protected because right-hand shots do come at a premium. And so to be able to get a guy who's uh, like a legitimate top four option um, just there for free for you um, to take, uh, if since he's exposed, I don't think there's, a, there's even a question. I think Seattle jumps at the chance. Yeah, and uh, with Buffalo, like, come on, man. Like, you got no one. <laughs> yeah, wow. that's true. Of, of all the players, um, they could at least like try to make a trade with Miller to get some value for him um, to for a team that could protect him, like what Colorado did with Ryan Graves. But they just stood pat, and now they're about to lose a legitimate top four defenseman for absolutely nothing. Yeah, and I think yeah. with a lot of other teams, there is a bit of contention with uh, who gets picked by Seattle. But no, with, with Colin Miller, it's straightforward. You take this guy because he's just that good. Yeah. All right, we have a uh, trade. Yes, this is the first trade. So this is this is uh, one of mine. Um, so initially, I actually didn't have Carolina protecting Brady Shea. I had them protecting Jake Bean. Um, and so this trade was really to keep um, Seattle from taking Warren Fogle, who is a, a pending RFA. Uh, but now that we know Jake Bean is being exposed, this trade makes even more sense. If anything, Carolina probably has to give up a prospect like Jamison Reese uh, or um, maybe a Dominic Bach, just to, just to, or Ryan Suzuki even to try to keep um, Seattle from taking Jake Bean. Because I think if if obviously there were no trades, Jake Bean's definitely the pick here. He's like 22, 23 years old. He's already an NHL defense, and then he's he's been a stud for for Carolina on an ELC, right? Yep. Um, but. Obviously, for those exact same reasons, Carolina, which is a team that has traditionally been sneakily one of the more frugal teams from from the from the front office and from ownership, you know, they value these entry level contracts and they value these young guys, right? Especially if they want to make sustained playoff runs. And so, Jake Bean, I think, is a huge part of their future. And I don't think they want to give him up. And so, Jake Gardner is a guy who's still an NHL defenseman. I think Jake Gardner at you know, a one point five, maybe two million dollar cap hit can easily be a serviceable defenseman on your on, on your third pair. It's just that he's overpaid, um, and Carolina has an extremely deep defense defensive core, and so they don't need him. But I think if you give up a first, a third, you know, picks to help Seattle build, and you also give them a, a stud prospect, maybe if that's not enough, I think I think this is the move um, for Seattle because they should be good year one. But there's no guarantees with with how their um, how chemistry might work out. So yeah, when Jake Gardner was with the Toronto Maple Leafs, a lot of people they made fun of him because rightly so because he <laughs> did make a lot of mistakes, uh, and he continued right. to do that while he was in Carolina. Uh, though on Carolina, he wasn't given as much of an opportunity because he was on such a good defensive core with so many good defensemen that he couldn't really break in. He was. Uh, Playing um, he was playing top six minutes instead of instead of uh being part of their actual uh top four, which he was in Toronto. Uh, and I think he did pretty well while he was there versus in Carolina, which he did he, he did stagnate a lot. So and during his time in Carolina, he was waived by the team. Yeah, that's true. I did I completely forgot about that, but yeah, he was waived. Uh, he wasn't really performing that well compared to the years where. He was uh, a Maple Leaf, so and it makes sense because they did need to waive someone uh, based on, you know, just taxi squad rules. So, yeah. So if it was someone it had to be Jake Gardner, I was a bit surprised he didn't get claimed, but at the same time, it kind of makes hit. sense. 
yeah. just the cap hit. And and that's the main reason why Carolina needs to make a move. It's not just keeping Jake Bean. It's freeing up the money to re-sign younger players that are coming up that need to get paid. They can't afford to pay Jake Garner for the next two years at, like, what, $5-plus million? Yeah. Yeah, so when Jake Garner first came out of Toronto, he, he was pretty highly touted because he had a uh, multitude of really good seasons while he was there. So, yeah, his cap it became pretty high. And after yeah. he came to Carolina, he wasn't playing as much. Uh, his numbers dropped off a lot. So yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, let's gonna move. We're gonna move on now. So, oh, so this is another one of Shay's picks. Yeah. Okay. So Max Domi, he's going to the uh, Columbus Blue Jack uh, from the Columbus Blue Jackets to the Seattle Kraken. So obviously, um, Max Domi used to be pretty highly touted uh, while he was in um, Montreal. After that, though. Has it really been the same? He's been decent. Uh, he's been like a half a point pace while he was in Columbus last year. Um, but f- if you're looking at Columbus, that's not exactly what you want, considering they have a couple younger players like Alexander Texier uh, or even Patrick Laine, who hasn't been that great, but you know he has a lot of potential to be great. Uh, so Max Domi does seem to be the odd man out. I mean, yeah, I mean, I was kind of surprised that Columbus um, let him be exposed, mainly because I thought that, you know, they trade for him during the offseason in the middle of a pandemic where he didn't really get a full training camp in a yeah. shortened offseason. Um, and he didn't really mesh with the team. He didn't really mesh with the coach who's now since been replaced. So I thought maybe since Columbus doesn't really have, like, a ton, especially since Texier is exempt, like, I thought maybe they – protect Domi just give him a second chance to rebuild his value this off this season with an actual year with the team and a new coach but it seems that Columbus is just trying to cut their losses um and they don't want his cap hit and they they just want to get him off the books it doesn't seem like they value him as a player anymore um and to be honest Domi is I is just part of that Montreal group of play of former highly touted picks that were expected to be like future top six or franchise centers that just ended up looking better as wingers. Yeah. Galchenia, Domi, <laughs> Truan, <laughs> the list just keeps going on. If, if And I mean, they finally figured out with Suzuki and KK, but uh, yeah, I mean, Domi, uh, Domi is Seattle and he's going to be a top nine guy for them. Oh, They'll for give sure. him the opportunity. They'll yeah. give him the opportunity. He has the pedigree. Um and he could easily live up to that five point three million dollar cap hit. He just needs to go back a year. He just needs to turn the clock back. Absolutely. One year. He's young enough. He'll be able to turn it around. I don't think he was yeah. really loving it in Columbus, and I don't think yeah. you can really blame him. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> he's easy, skilled. He can score. I mean, we saw him a couple years back in Montreal. It's a big dip since then, but I don't know. I like Domi a lot. I think he'll be able to turn it around if he goes to Seattle, get maybe a bigger role there. So. Yeah. All right. Oliver Shillington from the Calgary Flames. Yes, this is another one of my picks. Um, there are some people, there were some reports that are coming out that um, there's no reassurances from Seattle that they won't take uh, Mark Giordano unless they get significant draft compensation. But I think it is what it, it's, it's posturing. That's what it is from Seattle. They're trying to see if they can get the player that they wanted all along, but grab some value along the way because i don't think they're really considering getting like what 38 year old mark giordano yeah. making six plus million dollars a year mm-hmm. good player mark giordano is a good player but he regressed so badly last year without tj brody on his on his pair mm-hmm. um and with seattle is getting giordano really gonna be that much of an upgrade over other options i think getting a guy like shillington who's what 20 23 24 years old still has some upside has been buried in the depth chart uh over there in calgary just hasn't gotten enough of an opportunity to play in my opinion and has fallen out of favor with the team i think if he gets some playing time if he has the opportunity to at least compete for a job um in training camp um i think he could be a good player uh, i like shillington as a player and you know I, I hope he does well, and I think Seattle would be a good fit for him. Yeah, like Ryan mentioned, he hasn't really got much of a chance. Uh, sorry, he has got he's gotten a decent amount of chances in Calgary. Um, he's played uh, 40, 50 games almost yeah. uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, but in both those years, it wasn't too great. But at the same time, like Ryan said, he wasn't getting too much ice time either. Uh, if you give him a chance in Seattle, he could definitely go, uh, get better. He has potential. He's 
he is only 24. He's still got uh, time to get better. So, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a better pick over Giordano because, you know, Giordano's old. He's pretty much at the end of his career at this point. And like Ryan said, he was getting carried by Brody the last couple of years. So, yeah. First couple of years, I think Giordano definitely carried Brody or like was like really good. But I think the last couple of years, his regression has really been masked by how good Brody is as a two way guy. Yep. So, all right. So, you guys have anything else to say? Nope. I don't think so. All right. Then let's move on. The kids door off. Oh, another one of my picks. Uh-huh. So, um, I mean, I, at first I thought Caleb Jones was going to be the one who was left unprotected. But either way, like, Chicago just – no offense to Chicago Blackhawks fans, but the guys that you didn't – like, all the people worth protecting on your team got protected. Like, well, I, like it is – you know what I mean? Like, the only guy that's really not – that really could play meaningful ice time for this team uh, here in Chicago is Nikita Zdorov, who – Played top four minutes last year, and I think was probably arguably Chicago's second best defenseman, probably. which is crazy to say. Yeah, it's crazy to say, but like he was right, and behind Connor Murphy, and so you know having a guy like that being exposed, he's still like what 25, 26 years old, decently young, um, entering the prime or in the middle of his prime, and you know he's a big body and he plays physical, and his advanced analytics aren't always going to be the greatest. Uh, from year to year, there's always going to be fluctuations, but I think he's a good player, and that's what Seattle needs right now. They just need good players, um, and I think he's a good player. Yeah, so with Nikita Zadorov, um, uh, like Ryan mentioned, he isn't exactly uh, break the box. He's not going to score a lot of points. He's just he is a big body, and that's what you get most out of him. He, he knows how to use that. Uh, but like, there isn't that much left on Chicago. This is pretty much their only option. You can go out and get a bum, or you can go out and get Nikita Zadorov. So they went out. They're probably going to go out and get Nikita Zadorov. All right. Jonas Donskoy. So this is one of my picks. Well, it's supposed to be one of my picks, but, you know, things got messed up again because I was completely blindsided by the fact that they that the Colorado Avalanche did not protect Nikita. Uh, Jonas Donskoy. I originally had JT Comfort going to uh, Seattle, but he was. Um, but look, Donskoy is here, so you can't obviously have to take him because he is a very, very serviceable player. He makes. Uh, he is usually around. Uh, what's it like? 30, 40 points? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 30, 40 points uh, with the Colorado Avalanche. And that's in a decreased role compared to what he'd have in Seattle because of all the players that Colorado has. This guy could be playing second line ice time while he's in Seattle, maybe. So he definitely has an opportunity to play more, to uh, continue to make more, uh, to continue to produce more. And in a couple of years, 2022-2023 is where his uh, contract expires. He definitely has a chance to make a lot more money there. Yeah, I was a lot. I was very surprised even when San Jose didn't re-sign him because he was so good in San Jose, and then he goes to Colorado and has a couple of good years there. So this is, is going to be a good pick for Seattle for sure. Um, like I said, I'm pretty surprised they didn't try and keep him to be honest. Yep. All right, Ben Bishop. Ah, uh, another one of Shay's picks. Right. Uh, you you go ahead, Nick. Uh, well. It's Ben Bishop. We know he's had some health issues in the past, but if he can stay healthy, that could be a good pick. I mean, we know how good Ben Bishop is. He's huge, very hard to score on. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, he's just made a glass. That's the only problem. But uh, <laughs> yeah, he could be he could be a good pick, and that prevents you from having to take Carey Price. They're also not going to take Carey Price, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No. That's a good goalie though to take if he can stay healthy. Yeah. So there are a lot of good goalies in this expansion draft at the end in the free agency class that the mm-hmm. Kraken could pick up. So obviously, if Ben Bishop gets injured, there are other options. But if he's not injured, he's Ben Bishop. He's really, really good. So it could. Uh, it, this obviously depends on his health, but if 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 he stays healthy, the Kraken they have a they have, dare I say, an elite starting goaltender. I mean, yeah, no doubt. When Ben Bishop's healthy, in my opinion, he's a top five goaltender in the NHL. It's just that he doesn't play enough games because he's like Nick said, his body is actually just made of glass. Um, but if you look at Dallas, like after they traded Jason Dickinson away before before the roster freeze, like. 
the other pick was Dickinson. It was either going to be Bishop or Dickinson. So with the Dickinson trade, Dallas is basically saying, take Ben Bishop from us. Take his like $6 million cap hit off our books. Um, and the reality is I don't really see anybody else on the unprotected list for Dallas that's worth taking. And there's a risk and reward with Ben Bishop, but what's the risk, right? Seattle has cap space. Though the worst thing that could happen is Ben Bishop plays 30 games as an elite goalie, gets hurt, and then doesn't play another game for you. Well, that's still 30 games of elite goaltending, right? So, I mean, good pick. I think this would be a good pick for Dallas. I think Shea got this one around the, around the nail. Yeah, Ben, you know, it's only two years left. It's not like Seattle has anything to lose in that time. Even if they do make the playoff, they're not going to have – they're not going to be up to the cap – they're not going to be up to the cap with uh, it, when it comes to like paying their players. So, yeah, yeah. not not terrible cap either. Only five million compared yeah. to some other starting goaltenders out there. So it's I think it's worth the risk for sure. It, yeah, Definitely worth the risk. Yep. And right. I mean, knowing Bishop, they're just going to stick him on on Robida Island if he gets hurt. So <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Troy Stetcher. He was he was uh, one of my uh, picks. Uh, I have the Seattle Kraken taking Troy Stetcher from the Detroit Red Wings, and, you know, Troy Stetcher, in my opinion, uh, he was one of the few bright spots on um, Detroit the past couple of years. Uh, you know, he, he's 27 years old. He doesn't have too bad of a cap hit, and he's played, you know, he's been pretty decent in uh, Detroit this last year, and, you know, before that, he was pretty good he was very good in vancouver i think he had uh he had like 35 points and 32 in back-to-back seasons for vancouver so i think there's a very good chance that we could see him get like 30 to to 40 points again and he's just a solid pick all around for um for uh, seattle to take from detroit in my opinion yeah uh stetcher he, uh He's he was actually had a really good season, probably one of his better ones last year, uh, mm-hmm. on Detroit. Uh, he had a pretty big role there because Detroit had literally no one. Uh, so he was, but he stepped into it pretty decently, I'd say. Uh, in Vancouver, he was decent, nothing too special, bottom six definitely. But you know, he could be a top four defenseman if you give him the opportunity, like Detroit was forced to. So Seattle, they could get something special here if you know. Uh, if he can just like keep on getting better, because that's what he's been doing the last year. So, yeah, I mean, uh, Detroit uh, being the even though they're they were they their roster is a dumpster fire of bad contracts. Thanks, Ken Holland. Um, <laughs> but their defense last season was actually very very good, very very good, and Troy Stetcher was part of that. It's why Jonathan Bernier's statistics, despite playing on Detroit actually had pretty good numbers that might get him a payday when he hits unrestricted free agency this year. And choice, and we saw what he can do as an offensive uh, minded defenseman, as a puck mover at uh, the world at the, at the international stage for Canada this past year, that, that move and pass to Mangiapane. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was sexy. It, it was so beautiful. And that's just a showcase and a testament to his talent. And I think Seattle, like I mentioned, not a lot of right-handed defensemen that are going to be available for them to choose from. And if he's sitting there and he's shown that he can give you good production offensively and defensively, and he can play top four minutes as he showed last year in Detroit, I mean, he's he'd be a great fit there. So, yeah, Rossi, yeah, that'd be a good yeah. pick. All right. Juju Kara. So this one uh, was one of Shea's picks. And to be honest – a bit confused. Uh, I think he was confused too, but a lot of insiders from Edmonton are saying Jujar Kara is the guy that would be going to Seattle. I don't know if it was a side deal or something that wouldn't take what that would stop Seattle from taking Tyler Benson, who is a infinitely better mm-hmm. option in my opinion, but apparently not. So Jujar Kara, I don't think he meets. I don't think he meets the exposure requirements, Tyler Benson. I don't think he played enough games. Really? Is that why yeah. it was? But according to Cap Friendly, he needs 27 games required still. So I don't think they're even able to take oh, him. So if in that oh, case, that makes, that makes Kyra sense. makes sense. All right. Yeah. Well, in that case, I take everything back. But still, Jujar <laughs> Kara, he's just a big body is what he is. Uh, he's a power forward and... um. I think that's pretty much all I can say about him because he hasn't been doing anything really too special for the Edmonton Oilers while his while he's been there. 
except for being a big body. So, and and that that meme of his face after he got knocked down. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, no. that there's that. So, you know, if Seattle wants a good house for memes, then there you go. But yeah, other than that, he hasn't really been producing much. I don't know, eight points in forty games last year, four points in sixty four. That's a re- reoccurring theme. He's um, probably one of the wor- wor- Do you think he cracks the lineup? I mean, he's uh, he's a just a guy. He's just a guy. Yeah. That's what it is. He's a roster. He's just a roster filler at this point. <laughs> uh, I think isn't he also like a pending UFA or RFA? He's pending RFA, right? So like they like they might not even re-sign him. Like I don't know. Like he's just yeah. he's just a guy. You know, he's a big body. Uh, that's all he does. Just all be right. big. Yeah, so this one's a bit of a throwaway pick, but you know it's Edmonton. What'd you expect? <laughs> Chris Drieger. Uh, another Shea pick. Um, I mean, there were reports. I think it was Pierre LeBrun. Um, at, at first, um, I was a bit skeptical of Seattle taking a guy like Chris Drieger just because he's a non-restricted free agent. wasn't a huge fan of the idea of um, Seattle taking UFAs with their picks because you can go after those guys in free agency anyways, right? And you can offer them mo- more money than most teams can. Um, but a report came out and said that Drieger is going to sign a contract with Seattle after they take him. And so it, this just kind of becomes the pick then. Um, he's a good goalie. He's a really good goalie. And if if uh, Florida didn't have Bobrovsky, there's no way they'd be letting this guy go. Yeah. And with Ben Bishop, uh, like we said, he's a bit injury prone. There are other goalies that will be coming up in this in this draft. But uh, Chris Drieger is the second best option probably. So if Ben yeah. Bishop gets injured, he's your guy. And he's a pretty good guy to go to. Yeah. All right. Blake Gozai. Yeah, so this is my pick. Uh, LA just don't really have a bunch of names available. They left off Olimata, which I kind of expected. But they have Lemieux and Anthony CU available there as well. Um, I just think Lazar, you know, is a little bit younger. He's only 23, kind of a filler spot for you. He can probably crack the NHL. I think he's got some real good upside. Um, yeah, just not really a ton of options here from, from LA's perspective. They let go or they expose Jonathan Quick. Pretty old now, making a lot of money. So uh, I think he'd go with Blake Lazar, the cheaper, younger uh, forward there. Yeah, he's yeah. definitely got a bit of upside, so that's why you definitely go from. Although obviously there are a couple other forwards that would be better right now, but Lazat could be something in the future. And with Seattle, um, you're an expansion team. We you don't use Ve- the Vegas Golden Knights as a template for an expansion team because that just doesn't ever happen, right? right? So yeah, you one usually, in a million. Yeah, so you usually just go for you know a younger guy that can give you potential in the future. So this is the guy. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So this is one of my picks. Um, I was surprised, honestly, that yeah. Minnesota did not protect this man. Mm-hmm. Um, they decided to protect Cam Talbot, which, which threw me for a loop because I had Seattle taking Talbot, even though they already took Bishop and Trigger, because. Like like we mentioned, Bishop's got the health concerns, um, and if he goes down, you have another guy who's very very serviceable. And Talbot, especially in the playoffs, has been a really really good player. He kept Minnesota in that series yeah. against Vegas. He's the reason that series went to seven. Um, but they protected him, and I mean, this is even better if you're Seattle, yeah. in my opinion, yeah, because yeah. you're you already have your two goalies for right now in Bishop and Drieger, and there's gonna be more goalies later on that can that can play a backup role if Bishop gets hurt. But Kapokakin is like what, like 24, 25, has has yeah. NHL experience, really really good per- production for Minnesota. I mean, that's your goalie of the future right there. Right when Bishop really expires is. in two years, right, and then Drieger regret, and Drieger becomes like the 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 one A. Cat Cat can then can just step into that one B role and then take over the one A role, you know, as Drieger regresses and as he continues to grow. Now, I mean, this is this is this is picture perfect. I don't see what other pick there could be for Seattle. Like yeah. this is one of those things yeah. you might just have to pencil in. It reminds me of the time. Reminds me of the time when Detroit protected Jimmy Howard over Peter Morazic. Yeah, Detroit got lucky and they took Nosek, but that was that was even one that I was kind of like, I don't know uh, really. Yeah, because Kakinen's yeah. young, like he's got he's definitely oh, get yeah. better. And with goalies, they do usually progress a bit slower. But this guy, he's at 24, 25 years of age, and he's already put in the NHL. That's perfect. He's always been a highly touted goaltender too. He's always yeah. had that yeah. potential. So yeah, uh, this, this is a great pick. Brett Kulak. All right, so this is one of my picks here. Montreal, 
Um, yeah, they have Shea Weber, obviously, there. I didn't think they'd be protecting Ben Sherrod, honestly. I thought he would be one that they could probably afford to let him go. He's 30 years old, making $3.5 million. But they did protect him. Uh, they obviously waived Carey Price. No way they're taking Carey Price, as we mentioned before. So, Not Brett Kulak shot. probably makes the most sense. Tom Sitar, they leave out. Drew, and they leave out. Um, Deneau has an expiring contract there as well. You don't really want to be taking any of those older forwards there. So from a value perspective, Kulak probably makes the most sense. He's only 27 and he's only making just under $2 million. Uh, and he can fit right in that bottom pairing, maybe in the middle pairing for Seattle's good pick. Yeah. With Sherratt, I didn't expect him to get, uh, a lot of people didn't expect him to get protected. A lot of uh, Montreal fans I saw yeah. were pretty pissed that Kulak was yeah. protected. Yeah. Over analytically, Sherratt. he wasn't the greatest, especially in the playoffs. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, other than with Sherrod just being a big body, Kulak can do pretty much everything, right? So he's a serviceable defenseman in the uh, bottom six, even maybe top four, if they need him to step into that role. Also, can we please stop comparing this Carey Price situation to Mark Andre Fleury? Yeah, it's and not Vegas? the same. Yeah, that, what it's is not that? The, Fleury did not have ten and a half million dollars <laughs> on his contract for like the next five six seasons. Yeah, and he's and Florida was also good yeah. for Phil, like Pittsburgh in the yeah. regular season and playoffs. <laughs> like like Price had a magical run in the playoffs. Like no one's denying that he's the reason that me and Q's team got knocked out first round. He was amazing, but he's not a consistent Vesna guy. You know, like he's 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 like a he's like a decent guy in the regular season. He he turned back the clock for this playoff run, right? That's, that's not a reason for Seattle to take him and his ten and a half million dollar cap it. Montreal fans should be like from a logical perspective, obviously carry is so important to Montreal, but from a logical perspective, if Seattle takes Carey Price, Montreal fans should be cheering. Ten and a half million. You know what that could get you in free agency? That could get you a Dougie Hamilton and you'd still have like two million dollars left over. Yep. Yeah, so it's definitely not Mark Andre Fleury. All right, um, Will Butcher. Uh, Will Butcher is one of my picks. Um, to be honest, I didn't know who else they could take from New Jersey. Yeah, but Will Bit Will 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 Will, will Butcher is definitely a solid option. Uh, you know, as a defenseman, he's still pretty young. And he still has some upside. And he's just, you know, in my, you know, of course, I like to go for the cheaper guys. You know, so he's 26. He's still young. You know, he fits well on that left side. And he's still got upside. And, like, definitely he could turn into something if he gets more playing time. And so it could be a very good pick for Seattle. Tech. I'm a little surprised that the Devils exposed Ryan Murray. I know he's a little bit expensive. He's a pending UFA, gets injured a lot, but he's really underrated, I think. I think when he's in that lineup, he makes a huge difference to that blue line, and especially in Columbus as well when he was there. Mm-hmm. And they keep Yoga, they keep Siegenthaler instead. So, And obviously they leave it Will Butcher. I think out of all the fence, that's the easier one there. And there's not really anyone in the forwards to take either. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from the forward group, you're just looking at picking up like flyers, like um, – Oh, what, what, what even are their names? Like maybe like a McLeod or like uh, or like a Merkley, like someone like that. I mean, they're fine, but it's just you know, Butcher is probably the most NHL ready impact guy, and there's gonna be a lot of those kinds of forwards available in the draft. So, and there's not gonna be a ton of defense NHL ready defensemen. So yeah. Yep, I think this is definitely the safe pick to go with. Yeah. All right, we have a trade uh, to announce. All right, well. I'll start this off. Um, in rumors and stuff, it's it's basically been pretty much, I would I'll say with air quotes, confirmed that either Duchesne or Johansson will be traded away for Seattle to take, and it's more likely it's going to be Johansson because he's got one less year left on his deal. So I have Nashville giving Seattle their this year's first round pick and either this or next year's second round pick. And seven inches to Kayoff to take Ryan Johansson. And some people might think, well, why don't they take someone like Tomasino or Afanasev? But I think I think uh I think Ron Francis will be a bit smarter. People have overlooked Chistakayov because he is uh he is shorter and you know he's he's shorter and he's smaller. He's five eleven and but he does have really good upside. He could potentially be a top four D-man in the future. And with Ryan Johansson, who's had a couple of down years after his leg 
getting broken in 2017. He could bounce back. We saw a bit of that, that this year's playoffs where he kind of returned to form a bit. So it is just a good option for uh, Seattle to take, and it helps Nashville very much so, which is good on both ends for both teams. And, of course, Seattle gets a first and second pick. Yeah, obviously Seattle comes out on top with this uh, because they are taking a pretty uh, decent uh, pay- payback from the National Predators. But the Preds, they need to move this contract with both DeShane and Johansson. That's a lot of money to be taking on for two second-line centers. Uh, so, yeah, and with uh, Seattle, they have this really good return. And then Johansson, he might become that first-line center again, uh, like Rossi mentioned. He did it in the playoffs last year. There's nothing stopping him from doing it again in the future, right? So, Seattle, they could be getting something uh, good, potentially, if uh, Johansson keeps his playoff form up, and then they get these first round, second round, and semi uh, semi just to Kyle. Uh, like Rashi mentioned, he is a pretty decent prospect. So, yeah, I mean, seems like a pretty fair package. First round pick, second round pick, and uh, Shistakayov is. I mean, it's 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 tough, I think, for Nashville to give up those picks. But if you want to move a contract of Johansson's magnitude, uh, you don't really have a choice. Yeah. Um, what the only thing that's that might be tough giving up that first and second rounder is Nashville's obviously unloading a ton of talent. They 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 moved Arvidsson for I think penny on the dollar, pennies on the dollar. They they moved um they moved Ellis. And um, Yo- uh, Forsberg and Yossi might not be very happy with the direction that the team is going in. So, like, this team, like, I don't want to say it, but if they falter next year and they, they play badly, if Cody Glass doesn't, you know, develop and take that next step and become that top six center for them and, and they fall off, that first round pick might be valuable. Yeah. Like, and that second <laughs> round pick, and if that second round pick is next year, that pick might be valuable. So if the first round pick is this year, like Rossi mentioned, I think Nashville is okay because at least they made the playoffs. So they guarantee that that pick isn't super valuable. But if it turns out that first round or that second rounder is next year's first rounder or second rounder, Nashville's playing with a uh, with a little bit of uh, a little bit too dangerous of a game. So it's really going to depend what year that first rounder is. But I like I like Rossi saying this year's first specifically because I think Nashville would be gambling way too much if they made it next year's first. Yep. For sure. All right, Richard Panic. Uh, yeah, pretty easy here for the for the Islanders. It's good that they made the moves when they did because it looked like Scott Mayfield was in a bit of a question just because of the players they had to protect. Um, but yeah, Richard Panic, I think, makes the most sense uh, from a value perspective. He's only making one point three million, and I don't think the Islanders are really going to care really if, if he goes. He just acquired him in a trade for a cap dump. I'm a little surprised that Eberle wasn't protected, and they protected Kyle Clutterbuck as well. I didn't expect that at all. But um, and even cases Ezekiel, who's been part of that main core in the Islanders for a long time. But Panic makes the most sense, even if you want to flip him and he wants to move again, sure. Um, or he can even fit in that Seattle team. This, this is a player that played in the first line for Chicago uh, a few years ago, remember? So. So uh, he definitely has that upside. Um, so you could easily put him on the team. You can pronounce you whatever you want with him. So uh, pretty easy pick here for the uh, for the Kraken against the uh, Islanders here. Yep. So uh, just a Swiss Army knife. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And the Islanders, like like Nick said, that they did move away a lot of players too. Uh, and they also acquire a couple like Andy Green or re-signed a couple players like Andy Green to be uh, mm-hmm. eligible for this. And so, yeah, I, the, it's a pretty easy pick if you are the Kraken. Julian Gauthier. All right. So uh, the Rangers protected Ryan Strom. I thought for sure that he would be exposed, making four and a half million. The Rangers have a lot. There's a lot of noise upstairs. I apologize for that. But <laughs> there's. Uh, I was surprised because the Rangers have such a young team coming through, and I think that's going to be their new identity for the future. So I thought for sure, when you look back at Derek Stepan, Kevin Shattenkirk, that kind of dead weight, lots of cap that they had in that team, that for sure they'd be exposing Ryan Strom and maybe convincing Seattle to take Ryan Strom from them. Um, but they just re-signed Julian Gauthier. Maybe, you know, re- you resign him and Seattle takes him. And because you resign him, it's a little bit easier for Seattle to take him. So, um, yeah, I mean, they have such a young core. I thought maybe if you threw a guy like Will Cooley or Matthew Roberts or maybe even a pick or two there, if you think this young core is really going to be your future and they're going to take that next step. Well, I mean, we see Lafreniere. We know how good he is as well. Um, 
you know, I was just surprised that Strom was, uh, was protected there. But Gautier got a lot of upside still. He's only 23 years old. I mean, just re-signed under a million dollars as well. Or is he making 1.1 now, I think? I can't remember. But, um, yeah, well, pretty Parker. decent player as well. So. Yeah, he's definitely got upside, so that's the big part here for Seattle. Like we mentioned, you're not going to get another – you're most likely not going to get another Vegas type of run here. So mm -hmm. the potential is what you want. And, yeah, I did expect Ryan Strom to be um, exposed because um, he's got that big cap hit. And yeah. with the New York Rangers, you think that they want to be moving in a different direction, but apparently not. So – I don't know if there's there's something there's some other side deal or I don't know what's going on because I didn't expect them to ever want to give up Julian Gauthier because I was always I've always liked this guy, but yeah, uh, apparently not. We'll see what's going on. Uh, but I also I also really wanted to pick Tony D'Angelo by the way, and I'm not even like joking <laughs> when I say that. Just that'd be so fun to see. Like yeah, that would yeah, be it would be it would be. <laughs> see, I was just like, we just need the talent. We, we don't yeah. care what kind of person. I, just I need mean, the talent. He, He's 25. I mean, he's young enough. He's an RFA. He is young year. enough. Yeah. It, is, it has been reported that um, New York will buy out Tony D'Angelo. And once yeah, and there's do, that too. Montreal might be going after him, apparently. Yep. Yeah, wow. I remember Montreal's seeing that. already got enough bad people on their team. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Joey Decord. Uh, this is one for me. Um. Uh, of course, they've already been taking uh, Drieger. They're going to be taking Bishop. So Joey Decord is definitely a solid AHL goalie and someone that you can plug in to be a backup uh, for your team if something happens to the to two goalies in front of him. And Joey Decord's still young, and he's still got that good potential. Uh, there is a chance that we could see him as as uh, Kakinen's backup in the future, mm -hmm. or you know, heck, he could find his next level in Seattle and maybe you know slingshot ahead of ahead of what people might think he is. So it is definitely a very good option for uh, Seattle to take the cord, and you know, it'll just be fun to see what he could pan out to be over in Seattle. For sure. I mean, talent is talent, right? And I mean, having too many good goalies, I think, is an issue that a lot of fan bases wish they had. You know, like, I wish the Leafs had too many good goalies. Like, please, give me more. Like, if, imagine if, if I could have, like, uh, if the Leafs could have uh, two guys in their AHL that are Kakin and Dacker, right? Like, that'd be, like, a great AHL tandem. That That's, like, an AHL tandem, basically, except you're playing them in the AHL because you have two better goalies in the NHL. It almost feels wrong to say that Dacker and Kakinen will be playing in the AHL, but that's what it's that's what it's going to be. Yeah. Because they're so good, but it's, like, there's no room for them. It's, like, you know, maybe roll with a three-way tandem or something, but you can't do that. It does offer trade flexibility, though, because yeah, there are really teams does, that yeah. desperately need a goalie. Like Edmonton, oh, Edmonton needs a goalie, bro. Nashville they need needs, uh, Nashville needs a backup now that Rennie's gone. Right. It's definitely options. Definitely options. And Seattle, you'll see, we will have a final roster at the very end. You'll see that there are going to be some areas that that um, Seattle will want to address. And we saw this uh, for the Vegas expansion too. Like a lot of the extra players that they got, they already had pre-made deals with other teams, and then they just shipped off the extra players that they didn't need. Uh, and we could see something like that again. You know, they're going to have excess goalies. Goalies are coming at a premium price right now. It'd be time for Seattle to sell on one of them pretty early. Yeah. All right. We have a trade to announce. So this is another one of Shay's um, tr uh, picks slash trade scenarios, uh, and this one, this one when he showed me, I was like, "Ooh, like this might be one of the more controversial moves because hmm. you're you're moving a first round pick and Oscar Lindblom with Oscar Isaac Radcliffe." Lindblom is, Oscar Lindblom has been the heart and soul of Philadelphia of that yeah. team. Yeah, this is like, but I mean. They did add a huge contract in Ryan Ellis. They're, they are going to have to be paying a couple players. And they do have young guys coming up like Morgan Frost, who was hurt, uh, Joel Farabee, who's ready to take that next step. So, I mean, Lindblom, I won't say Lindblom is expendable, but, you know, if you had to move him, talent-wise, you do have the pieces to, to recover. Um, 
his production, I guess, in a sense. It's just, I mean, yeah. it's a premium price to pay. It's a that's a premium price to pay to get off of Voracek's contract, who I think is still a pretty good player. Like he might be a first line guy on Seattle. You know, like he's still a very good player, just yeah. not worth the contract he's getting paid. Um, yeah, logistically it makes sense, but kind of makes sense. But you know, uh, from a morale standpoint of and how how Philadelphia can connect with their fans, Oscar Lindbaum losing him is a big, big, big piece. Yeah, it's a bigger yeah. loss, and not even just in point standpoint. Yeah. Well. I think we're going to move on now to Zach Aston Reese with the Pittsburgh Penguins. All right. So I will say that I'm happy it's not Jared McCann being taken. I'm still not happy about that trade for whatever reason. But um, yeah, I think Zara makes the most sense. I mean, obviously, he's a really good defensive player, real good in that bottom line, bottom six. Um, only making a million dollars. He's a pending RFA, but I think Seattle, if they take him, will have no problem resigning him. Um I was a little bit surprised Matheson was left protected, to be honest. He's making a lot of money. And a guy like CeCe is exposed as well. I thought they might have protected him as well. And Tristan Jari as well. So, real surprising there. But, yeah, Zara is probably the easier option here in terms of value. Yeah, definitely. So, for San Jose, I have Seattle taking Matt Nieto. Um, in my opinion, this is a very solid pick for Seattle. Matt Nieto is a solid third and maybe even a second liner. He does still have that potential. Um he looked good in he looked good in um in uh Colorado he had a pretty okay couple of you know seasons the past few seasons and so let's hope you know he it is still not it's a solid option at, for uh Seattle and you can't go wrong with it uh, that's just my opinion yeah. I mean, yeah, he's a good player. Um, a good depth scorer. I like him. Yeah, he's a good player. He's, he's a good player, as Mike Babcock likes to remind Plurk. us every <laughs> single press conference. Good player. Good player make good plays. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Burns are protecting as well. $8 million, 36 for another, like, what, three years? That's pretty expensive. I don't know yeah. why you protected him, but yeah, I don't know. Go for it, I guess. <laughs> All right. Vince Dunn and the St. Louis Blues. Uh. Is this a shape? I, I thought I was doing St. Louis, and I had a uh, Tarasenko being taken. Uh, All right, you you sent me three different names, so I took the first one. <laughs> so I took oh, the I first did. one. Okay. You you gave me Dunn or Sun Sunquist slash Tarasenko. Right, so I took the one. Dunn. We're well, going with Dunn. I'll, I'll explain why I think Dunn, and then I'll explain why I think uh, Tarasenko, because I do think it's going to be Tarasenko after they didn't protect him. Well, first, you have Vince Dunn, who's young, uh, pretty good option. I mean, you can't go wrong with Dunn. He's, you know, of course he's young, and he's he's a very good defenseman already. Uh, He'd be on uh, uh, Seattle's first pair. So, to be honest, I yeah, kind of agree with sure. this one more than Tarasenko. I, I mean, Dunn would be their best player, arguably. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's Dunn. really good, undervalued for sure. He's only making, like, 1.8 yeah, million. But, he's depending on RFA, though. He'll probably get a pay raise, but he's young enough. He's good enough. That's probably going to be their best option, really, just in terms yeah. of value. I do like this pick better than Tarasenko, to be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, but you can tell us why you think about yeah. Tarasenko. Yeah, go ahead. But I do think – now, here's something I believe. Tarasenko wants out. They didn't protect him. Seattle may bite on that because that is a big jersey seller. Oh. For Tarasenko. And I mean – It is, it if, is a way – to you know just create uh you know revenue and and such so you know and Tarasenko still has you know some upside so it is it is like a high risk but it could be a very high reward for Tarasenko but to be honest there's there is no wrong option in this yeah uh taking from St. Louis unless you decide to take someone I mean there is a wrong option but you can't go wrong with Dunn or Tarasenko really if I'm being uh, honest, though, I think St. Louis would have to tr- trade an asset or two to Seattle for them to take Tarasenko. Yeah. Just because, in number one, injuries, obviously. He's had, like, what, two or three shoulder surgeries, which has been tough on him. There's a reason St. Louis doesn't want him anymore. And on top of that, like, they put him on the trade market, ruined his relationship with the team, 
told him that there were no teams interested in him when there were multiple teams like Boston who checked in, just didn't give them the value that St. Louis thought he was worth. And so now the player is increasingly upset with the organization. If anything, St. Louis is desperate to get him off their team because they just botched this whole thing completely. And if I'm Seattle, I'm going to say, oh, you're afraid he's going to be a locker room cancer now that I, you've ruined your relationship with him? and you want me to take his $7.5 million and his injury issues, you're going to have to give me a first-round pick and um, and a prospect. Give me, give me a first-round pick and a prospect, and I'll take him instead of Vince Dunn. Um, and so, you know, I mean, if they go that route with Tarasenko, like, I mean, low-key, I, I, might, I might agree with Rossi. Then I might take Tarasenko because you're getting value for the future to build, and there's the potential for Tarasenko to rebound. Um, but I don't know if I would just straight pick Tarasenko over Dunn. Yeah, yeah. All right, are we done here? Yeah, oh, I see what you did there. Uh, 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 all right, Tampa yeah. Bay. So this is the last team. This is my trade. And, um, I mean, yeah. I mean, Tampa Tampa's going to have to give up decent value if they want to if they want to keep the guys like this like Andre Pilat is is exposed um their their best defense Cal Foot their best defensive prospect is is exposed if they want to keep those guys and they're gonna have to give up someone right and I think Matthew Joseph who's who's been a good player for them 23 24 years old ha- is a solid guy on their fourth line top nine he's a good player he's got a lot of potential but he can't you got to give up something to get something. Um, and the first round pick Tampa's going to give up is going to have to be from next year because there's no way um, Seattle wants the 31st overall pick. Yeah. They want at least the possibility of Tampa Bay regressing or falling or not, not winning the cup. Basically, that's all they're banking on, that yeah. Tampa doesn't 3P, right? So they, they'll, they'll want next year's first. And they'll take Matthew Joseph as well, who's a, who's a good young guy, who's younger than pretty much most of the other players on this team at 24 years old. Um and then, and they'll take Tyler Johnson, who I think rebuilt some of his value uh, this 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 past season with Tampa. He's he's been he was better this year than he was last year yeah. for sure. Um, but like, the asking price for Seattle last I checked was a first round pick. But I think as it gets closer and closer to the deadline, Tampa Bay is going to get desperate. They'll add Matthew Joseph for another young player to get it done because they really don't want to lose a guy like Pilat or God forget, God forbid Cal foot. Um, Cause he's the future of, on that blue line. Um, he's their only really good defensive prospect. Okay. So is it Toronto Maple Leafs? And this one, I don't know about this one anymore. And honestly, because there is a, uh, cause I just saw a report. Uh, from um, someone that's close to the organization, that the Toronto Maple Leafs aren't willing to make a trade to, uh, for the um, uh, for the oh, for the Seattle Kraken. Oh no! Oh so, no! Um, this might might be wrong. Obviously, this obviously may be wrong. Um, but uh, what this person is saying is that uh, they just got Jared McCann as a second option. So. If the uh, Kraken decide to take Kerfoot, then they, then they have McCann. If the Kraken decide to take McCann, then they have Kerfoot. Which I mean, is stupid. Like really, really, really stupid. Yeah, you can see. Well, uh, Ryan's. Just, oh no. Yeah. I think we've broken him. Dubas <laughs> is no longer a master class. But here's the thing. <laughs> I ref- I refuse to believe that's true. I can't believe that's true because Dubis never been one to give up assets for nothing. Like he had. He has he has literal top six defensemen or, or seventh defensemen that he'll give away in trades because he's not gonna give them up for nothing. So I believe that's what's gonna happen here. And um I do think that this trade is still gonna happen because holy crap, if that if oh. if we lose McCann in, in the expansion draft oh. for nothing, I'm actually gonna I'm I'm gonna throw a fit. Alright? No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. This is fun. So we're going to ignore that I just said that, and we're going to go back to Kerfoot gets taken because the Leafs are going to trade Philip Kral, uh, who is a C-tier prospect, Miko Kokkonen, who is a very good defensive prospect, and 2022 third because the Leafs don't have a third this year. right? So uh, Kerfoot is a very serviceable third-line center uh Top six uh, wing playmaker. He's only making three point five million. He's only twenty seven years old. He could def. Uh, he 
will play a big role in Seattle when he gets picked because he will get picked, right? So, um, so yeah, we're, uh, I don't think it's going to take too much in a trade for the Leafs to uh, convince Seattle to take Kerfoot because Kerfoot and McCann really aren't that far apart. Like, there is, uh, like, I obviously want McCann more, but still, there isn't that much there. So, this is definitely going to be enough. It has this to be, isn't, right? This, this, this yeah. isn't happening. This isn't happening. <laughs> we did not <laughs> give away Philip Hallander back to Pittsburgh just so that Seattle could take him. I refuse to accept it. Yeah, I don't no. believe that. I don't believe that. <laughs> no, Dubis. No, no, I... Oh my god! I made the video yes, too soon. Bitch. I made the video. Oh, I made the video too soon. I call. I said masterclass. I titled it masterclass. <laughs> I said it was. A, oh, it was right. we're just gonna seven move. Three, we're one. we're just gonna do a seven three. Oh. We're gonna move on so we can up. keep Ryan sane. Um. This is one of my picks, Matthew Ho- Highmore of the Vancouver Canucks. All right, so this guy's just pretty much going to play on the AHL. That's, like, literally all I can say. The Vancouver Canucks have literally no one. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah, they suck. So, yeah, this is all that's there. <laughs> <laughs> and it, I struggled to find a good picture of this guy, so instead we get this one. Um, That's how irrelevant he is. All right, let's move on quickly. Mason Appleton, this is another one of my picks. All right, so... Um, the Winnipeg Jets, they, there are a lot of good players. I expected Logan Stanley to be available, and that's the guy that I originally chose, but apparently not. There is Mason Appleton. Uh, so I think Mason Appleton's going to get taken because he is a serviceable bottom six player, um, and Seattle could definitely use uh, depth because, I mean, which team does not want depth, right? So what do you guys think? I mean, I'd argue he might not even just be... I mean, he's 25 years old. He was drafted in, what, 2015? But uh, in, like, like he was a late draft pick, too. But the thing is, like, I'd argue if he was playing on a team not in Winnipeg where they had Stastny and Little as their two Cs, um, and then they had Shifley, obviously, as the one C, I'd argue he might be a top six player by now for Winnipeg. Um because Winnipeg just has so much depth down the down down the middle, um, with uh, with Lowry, with with Appleton, with with, with Stastny last year, um, obviously Shifley, and then they also brought in Pierre Luc Dubois, um, who's going to be the new two C now, and then they also had Jack Roslovich, right? And we saw how good Roslovich showed he could be with Columbus in an expanded role. He he went over to Columbus, instantly became their second line center, um, playing with uh, Line A and I believe Texier. And they were really good together for a good stretch. And, and Rosovich showed, like, I'm not just a depth fourth-line center. I'm a depth fourth-line center because Winnipeg refused to play me above that role. Um, and I think Winnipeg chose to keep Appleton over Rosovich. One of those two was going to go, right? They chose to keep Appleton, and they, they're giving Appleton the opportunity. And I think with experience and ice time, I think I think he's he's in contention to play in that Seattle top six, and at 25 years old, I mean that's a hell of a pick. I think that's why the the Jets were trying to trade Appleton because they didn't want to lose a player like him for nothing. All right, makes sense to me. And I think this is the last one, right? Yeah, yeah. Vitek Vanasek from the Washington Capitals. All right, so the Washington Capitals they have their two young good goalies in Samsonov and Vanasek. And at the at some point in the season, there was a there was contention about who uh, the Seattle Kraken would pick out of those two goalies, which one would be protected. But by the end, it was obviously Samsonov, um, and that leaves Vitek Vanacek. And like we said, there is a uh, doubt about whether um, Ben Bishop can play a full season because you know he gets injured a lot. And in that case, the they have like what now four. Good five. goal or five. I mean, yeah, five goalies until including Bishop. Yeah. yeah, so they have four good goalies that can come in and play instead. And Vanis is still pretty young. He's only 25, so he's still got potential. So, yeah, this is definitely a no-brainer when it comes to uh, Washington Capitals because they just have a really good option right here. All right, let's go yeah. to the full team. Without further ado... Yes. That's a pretty solid it's, team, man. That's a, that's a solid that team. team. Yeah, like that's a serviceable first line. That's like what most teams can have on a second line. I mean, oh wait. Uh, that, that I mean, like I, I, I like I said, 
you're not going to have another Vegas type run, but holy crap, you might cuz that is a decent at that is a decent team, man. For sure, for sure. That's a that, that's a really good roster. Um and I mean a lot of like bounce back candidate guys like Johansson could be good. Um, Kashi could rebound. Milano in his in, in his increased role could rebound. Kerfoot is going to play in that top nine somewhere, and if he plays like the way he played in the in the playoffs, that's a really good player for for Seattle as well. And I mean, you got the you got three great goalies that are just scratched right now in the system, and you could move one of them to improve the defense yeah, or a get a there. top six guy. There's, a there's trade. definitely a trade there if they go with this roster. Yeah. All right. Oh, we've been recording for forever, and I am so hungry, <laughs> like insanely hungry. So I think we're gonna end it there. Is there anything else? Anyone else have anything to say? Uh, not really, but, um, you know, we're going to be, we're going to be recording a live, we're going to be doing a live stream on Wednesday during the expansion draft to see, uh, how well our mock actually, uh, squares up with the real thing. So if you guys, if you guys, you know, want to hear opinions, you guys want to hang out with some people in chat, uh, you know, feel free to join our live stream on Wednesday. And, um, yeah, if you enjoy the content, this, this, this off season has been crazy. It's going to be crazy. So the content is going to start gearing up here. If you guys want to watch, you know. Hit the subscribe button, like the video, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.